Hi and welcome to my channel in Danny Jones and I will be crafting today with my friend Monica from Up All Night DIY. We decided to take an adventure into steampunk DIYs. Now what is steampunk? Simply put, it is the subgenre of science fiction, trying to imagine what life would be without electricity, but it also incorporates Victorian styles and ideals. With regards to fashion, every steampunk costume has to have a top hat or a hat of some sort. So I'm going to create by hand my own steampunk top hat. Now you can use a bowler hat or a top hat that you can find at any costume store. But I thought using these foam sheets that you can get at any hobby store, you can create your own top hat. Now you can also create a fascinator and I might have some fascinators coming soon, but this one was a full top hat size. All I did was create the brim and the top hat part and just glued them together with hot glue as you can see. Hot glue is very easy to use with EVA foam. It of course has a little bit of a slant as I always love a slant in a hat. Now using a hot gun or heat gun I'm sorry I'm creating a shape in the brim I always like to have it a little low on the eyes and then up in the back that's just my style and you can create it into any style that you want uh, EVA foam is very easy to use with heat guns but you can also use a very hot blow dryer so don't think that you have to buy specific equipment to make a hat from EVA foam in the opening that you saw before, I just ticked in a little sheet of EVA foam and now I'm creating the top part of the top hat. Again, very easy to use with EVA foam to just shape it into place and using heat and a hot glue gun, um, just being able to put, put everything together. One of the things I love about doing DIY is being able to create what you have in your mind. And I wanted to create a very feminine and light colored, I guess light academia could also befit the aesthetic that we're going for here. And I had this beautiful fabric left over. It wasn't big enough for a pillow or anything else. So I decided to use this for the hat. I just love the brocade that is on this light powder blue fabric with gold. I just love it. So here I'm again using my hot glue gun to add the fabric to my mold or to my base of my EVA foam hat, top hat. Now here I would advise you to just be patient with yourself and things will work out. If I really knew what I was doing and I will admit and accept to the fact that I am not a professional milliner, I don't make hats for a profession and I'm still learning, I usually use the act of pleating as not only decorative but functional because I should have made cuts at the bottom to make this easier for myself but I love pleating to uh, achieve the look that I want and what I'm doing here is I created what's going to become a corseted front to the hat and I just thought it would add more to the femininity of this whole hat of course you know I love dress forms I love corsets um, all of that is very Victorian so I thought how perfect to include that aesthetic in my top hat for my steampunk design. Now that I've finished the side of the hat, now I'm going to complete the top of the top hat. Very easily done with some scrap left over from my EVA foam and my fabric. And this one I am going to do correctly. I'm going to cut little slots all around this fabric so that it is easy for me to shape it into the top hat round, as you can see here. It's not round, it's more oval. I guess and the little slice slices or little slits that I made in the fabric will make it so much easier to just go around with my spidery spindly skinny little fingers sometimes I look I, I don't know why I feel like I have spider fingers you know like spider hands spider hands does whatever a spider hand can I don't know I just see my hands are like spindly a little tiny little things anyway here I am just gluing it all around and making sure it's nice and tight and this will serve as the top of my top hat. And again, it will look lovely once it's done. And now I've glued down the top of the top hat. And now the top hat's looking so much better than just, you know, that white EVA foam. But we're going to go even further and let's color or let's paint with folk art gold paint the brim of the hat. I could have covered it in fabric, but 
I was kind of running out of steam. Ha ha. Being steampunk, I was running out of steam. Get it? Okay. Well, anyway, so I decided to just go ahead and paint it. Besides, I love the color of this paint. I thought it was perfect for this project. And I did the top of the brim, and now I'm doing the bottom of the brim because, of course, since it is shaped to move upwards, you'll see the bottom as well. Now, I am including a lovely little piece of lace in the inside of the corset and I'm just gluing it in place with a little hot glue and it'll keep it you know sitting up nice and pretty and feminine and again I just love it I even love those pleats that I had to make because I didn't cut the fabric right or I didn't I don't know I didn't do something right but whatever it looks nice with that pleat on the side just lovely and I mean what a great idea for a Halloween party or if you're having an Alice in Wonderland party what a beautiful hat to include to go to a tea uh, a Mad Hatter's Tea Party. It's just so much fun that you can do with this. Now, to complete the corset look, I am including these beautiful pearled buttons that I found. Now, I could have sewn the buttons in, but I was running out of time and I just decided to glue them on and hope that it was going to give the effect that I was looking for in this corseted top hat. And as you can see, once I have laced through the buttons, this gold trimmed ribbon was the perfect effect to create that beautiful corset on my hat. Now to continue decorating because this is the most fun. Like get all your trims and laces and everything that you love and enjoy and just have a big old basket full or a box full sitting around just waiting to do something with and go to town have fun i'm including lace you can include old pins broken jewelry whatever you like now again steampunk aesthetic includes things like gears and and watches and clocks but this could be anything you would like now i found this beautiful blue ribbon that was part of my mom's stash. She had a huge roll of this ribbon and I thought it was a perfect contrasting yet complimentary color. Just wait till the final reveal. I'm glad you joined me today for this adventure in Victorian industrial steampunk and I invite you to visit Monica at her channel Up All Night DIY. She makes the most incredible vintage and retro styles and wait till you see what she has coming up for Halloween. Anyway, check out her channel today. Another easy way to change any outfit into a more steampunk or Victorian looking outfit is by adding some beautiful lace cuffs. So here I am creating some complimentary lace cuffs for my lovely top hat and I'm just using some lace which I already had and that beautiful blue ribbon that came from my mother's stash. And what I'm doing is adding the lace to the ribbon and then I'm going to flip it over. There you see, I flipped it over and I'm going to add another ribbon, which is actually a little bit um, elasticized. And I could have sewn this, but I didn't want to pull out my machine and all this stuff. So all I'm going to do is tie it around my wrist. But before I do that, I'm going to add some lovely steampunk embellishments. Here I am just adding, you know, like a little buckle and some gears and pearls, whatever I can find. Now, all of this steampunk embellishment you can also find in your hobby stores like Hobby Lobby. And here I am just tying it to my wrist. Again, you could put this on after you've put on your, your blouse just to give it a little steampunk flair. Any long sleeve shirt is now perfect for a steampunk costume. And it didn't take that long or that much money. Try it for yourself. One last finishing touch to your steampunk outfit is some nice steampunk goggles. But why spend some money when you can make your own with something you might have around the house? These are these little tin metal containers or canisters that you can get at the Dollar Tree and I think they come two in a pack. Perfect. And all you do is take the tops and those are going to become your goggles. I'm using the same ribbon that I used in my handcuffs or handcuffs? Not handcuffs. Wrist cuffs? I don't know what to call them. Lace cuffs. And handcuffs just doesn't sound right, does it? Anyway, we're not using handcuffs for your people. Not handcuffs. Okay, lace cuffs. Anyway, we're going to add the elastic to our what's going to become the nose support and again the same elastic that we used on those lace cuffs are going to go around our head because it's slightly elasticized it's easy to just slip over our head and there you have your little steampunk goggles now I hate to say it but you can use these goggles for another costume which is very popular especially with a recent um, movie that came out just this past summer I believe so you can either go steampunk or you can become 
one of Gru's minions. Ah, my boy. That's right, minions. <laughs> you can see it right there, but check out the final reveal. Thank you once again, dear friends, and I hope you enjoyed this adventure into steampunk, and I especially hope you stop by Monica's channel, Up All Night DIY, so you can check out her wonderful steampunk DIY ideas, as well as all of her wonderful retro and vintage decor designs. Thanks, as always, for spending time with me, and most especially, I always like to say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure and if part of that adventure is joining me in more of these wonderful diy ideas come back for more subscribe like and share so you're up to date with all the fun things that i'll be doing this fall i'll see you again very soon